You know, I really must confess. Actually, we all do. Confession, that is. We need to confess our sins. And this evening, we're going to talk about this holy mystery we call penance in the Holy Orthodox Church. I'm John Rigetti, and also here today is Father John Abdallah, who's going to interview Father Gregory Long. Father Gregory is the pastor at St. Anthony's Orthodox Church in Butler as we explore the issue of confession, the sacrament of penance. Stay with us. Welcome, Father Gregory. It's really good to have you with us again. Thank you. It's nice to be here. You've got a lot of courage to come onto the show and talk to people about something that is so misunderstood and so delicate sometimes and, and confusing, the great sacrament of, of, um, of confession. Yes. I don't think that there's anything more misunderstood than, uh, than this mystery of, of confession. I agree. On a number of occasions in my parish, I have had discussions, and even in sermons, where I've tried to get across the point that confession is really not, you know, I don't want to know how bad a person somebody is, but rather to restore that person into a, a more direct and a more proper relationship with Jesus Christ. What, a, what a, a beautiful image, you know, and I don't think that anything that a priest does uh, except presiding over the the Eucharist, mm -hmm. shows more the uh, presbyter's function of revealing to people God's will, His forgiveness, yes. His love, His desire for for us to be saved. Absolutely. What do you think are the the obstacles are, or why so many jokes and so much discomfort about about confession? Well, I think a lot of it really does come from the fact that people want to be seen as a positive kind of a person or a, a good person. And they're afraid, I think, that if they confess, that they're going to be seen as somebody that's a sinner, you know, and a bad person. And I honestly think that um, in order to understand the correct relationship, it's, it's really incumbent upon the priest who hears the confession to sort of help guide them and understand that, you know, everybody's pretty much in the same boat. You know, that we're all role models, we're all saints and sinners at the same time. And so a lot of it is just getting them to be more comfortable in understanding that no one's there to say, oh, yuck, you're a bad person. No one's there to condemn them. No one's there to make them feel worse than they already do, but instead to fix, you know, to not really to fix, but to make them understand that, that they're loved by God and that through this sacrament, through this wonderful sacrament, they are reestablishing that better relationship with God. Well, do you love people less when you find out that, that they're sinners? Not at all. I mean, in fact, I understand you know, more about them. You know, honestly, I, I don't want to sound um, negative or anything, but when someone doesn't confess, then, then you begin to wonder, you know, what are they hiding? You know, I mean, it's not that I'm running a, a gossip mill either, but I, I, I get the perception that they're so afraid or, or so closed that they, they don't want to um, open themselves up to the possibilities of being loved by God. Sure. But uh, it's not God. I think it's your eyes that, that people are, your, your eyes meaning the eyes of the priest that people are afraid of. Yes. And it doesn't really make sense. You know, I think if we were to say to John, you know, right after his, his beautiful uh, introduction, um, John, if, if you had a friend uh, who confessed something that was painful or delicate or, uh, uh, you, you know, would your respect and love for that person increase or decrease? I, I, I would be willing, willing to wager. We can ask him, but I would okay. be willing um, uh, to, to say that, that he would say that his respect for such a person uh, would increase, you know. Yeah. Uh, as, as human beings, we respect people who are willing to deal with the issues yes. and come to grips with things more than people who are going to try to hide things and put them under the carpet or, or kind of um, avoid and deny all of those sure. kind of coping, coping mechanisms instead of getting in there and identifying things, marking them, and then coming to the church to find out 
what the church's wisdom of 2,000 years of experience is yes. about how to break certain habits and those, those kinds of things. Yes. Uh, I, I, I would suspect that most of what I hear in confessions are not sins but symptoms. Yes. Symptoms of I sins. I agree. And so your experience is the same. That It is. Um, a lot of times they come up to me with a list of things that they've done. Um, some sure. of them will actually write them out. You know, I've done this, I've done that, I've done that. And um, usually in a situation like that, I, I ask them to dispense with the list and to... Oh, especially if it's four or five pages. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> well, I, I don't do. think I've had that issue yet. <laughs> but a lot of times what I'll try to encourage them to do is to really, you know, we, we, we take, in, in a sense, it's more of a, of a therapeutic kind of a situation. You know, I listen to what they're saying. I don't just interrupt and, you know, dispense sure. with it. But I try to sort of drill down, if you will, and try to understand what's underneath all of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, if, if you've got this particular situation, and, and a lot of times um, it takes more than one experience sure. to really get a sense of what's going on. Yeah. And so, you know, it's incumbent on me to make sure that I remember, you know, what someone sure. has done from one stage sure. to the next. Without sharing any secrets, what's no. usually underneath? Um, there are a number of things. Um, there are issues of um, a lack of commitment, a lack of understanding um, of love, a lack of, of being willing to love, a lack of, um, of wanting to come to... Um, a, a deeper relationship with God. And, you know, to be honest, I think one of the greatest problems that we have is that people don't really look at themselves very carefully. I think they, they're so busy in their lives, they don't really get the time to be still and to really self-assess, to really understand where they're coming from. And so when they get into this thing, the only way that they can tell is by looking at the symptoms. You know, they really don't understand that, that the... So if you can help someone understand that the problem is a fear, sure. a fear that, uh, or, or lack of commitment, mm -hmm. uh, a fear that if you give to God your will, if you surrender to God, that God's going to do something bad to us, that God is going to misuse us, and, and um, uh, that's not the way yeah. uh, God reveals himself to be. You know, not he's, at all. he's not... Um, waiting for us to make a mistake to pounce on us, but, but he's wanting us, he reveals to us, he's wanting us to be saved, he's yes. wanting us to share his life, he's Absolutely. wanting us to be free and, and to be joyful. Uh, imagine how freeing that is. Well, we don't have to imagine, we know each other, we the confess video. our sins. Yes. Uh, we know how freeing it is to recognize that our our problems are human problems, and, yes. and that God already knows them, He already understands, that the Word of God already hung on the cross for us to have new beginnings and, and new life. Yes. The image of priest as standing with the people before God mm -hmm. is, is uh, so strong in, in confession, that, that the priest uh, stands next to the penitent as, as, as a witness and stands That's right with the penitent to help the penitent understand what the penitent is confessing. And then the priest stands with God and helping the penitent really understand that even these specific sins, God has the power and the will to forgive, to give us new starts, to, to give us new life. Yes. Uh, I oftentimes are so anxious uh, before going to confession, but after confession, like floating on air, you know, yes. that, that, um, that yes, what I, what I knew to be true really is true, that yes. the church understands and, and that we're, we're supporting each other, we're in this together, and, That's right. and it's okay. Yes. Uh, there's so many, con so many jokes about confession. That's true. You know, yeah. and... Um, why do you think that is? Why do you think there are so many jokes? Well, when you're uncomfortable about something, you usually will disguise it in the form of humor. Sure. You know, and so I think a lot of it, again, just returns to the fact a lot of people don't know what to say. A lot of people want to be seen as holier than maybe they really are. But at the same time, I mean, they're vulnerable. And they, no one likes to be vulnerable. You know, they want to be seen as strong and stable and 
you know, and, and unfortunately, you know, it's, it's difficult culturally to show signs of weakness. And when you're in confession... But what a paradox, because Absolutely. it's when we look weak that we're the strongest, that we are man enough and strong enough to recognize that we still need God. Absolutely. The opposite of that, imagine, yeah. that I would be so great that I don't need God, then I'm lost. Well, that, yes, <laughs> that's one of the key points that I tell my parish, is that don't think that anything that you have done is beyond God's forgiveness. And in fact, that's the one biggest problem you have as, as a person is to think that my sin is unforgivable. I mean, honestly, in order to get to that next step, you have to understand that God's mercy overshadows everything. And there's nothing that anyone has done that isn't within the realm of forgiveness so long as there's repentance. Everything is forgivable in that regard. And so that's an important key to uh, sure. sort of emphasize. Okay. Who's, who's doing the forgiving? God forgives. God's doing the forgiving. He's Absolutely. the high priest. Jesus That's Christ right. is the high priest. And, and as presbyters, we pray that God's forgiveness be revealed. That's right. Because it's already there. God's That's forgiving right. us and, yes. and he's loving us. In the uh, first century, mm -hmm. people confessed to the whole community. That's right. Yes. Uh, what, what happened with that? Well, um, you can understand why they would. The idea is that as the body of Christ, you need to be able to trust each other. And so by standing up and confessing their sins, they revealed ways in which they betrayed their own community. The problem is, it's kind of a, a human condition, but some people would confess their sins in the midst of the congregation, and the next thing you know, that got out into the public arena. Okay, so that the other people were tempted by yes, those sins. And, that's right. And, and so the priest became the representative of, of the community. That's we need to talk more about this, the relationship that we have, not just to God, but as members of the community. Uh, but before that, uh, we're, I don't know if you know this, but uh, your wife Nancy's oh. gonna come, not to talk about your confession oh, good. Or, or, or your sins, uh, but just about some pra practical uh, experiences in the, in the life of the church. Why are there no closed confessional boxes in Orthodox churches? The Orthodox see confession as fundamentally a community act, so it is visible. But what is said by the penitent and the advice given by the confessor are not audible. Also, since both priest and penitent together face the cross and the gospel book, the priest is a witness rather than a judge. Hi, I'm John Rigetti, and my guest today is Nancy Hannah Long. Nancy makes the other part of the team that was on earlier today with Father Gregory Long. Together they make this great team at St. Anthony's Orthodox Church in Butler. Nancy, welcome. Thank you. Um, today we're not going to talk to Nancy Hannah Long, priest's wife. We're going to talk to Nancy Long, practicing Orthodox Christian, about, in a very practical sense, you and I as lay people, this concept of confession. You know, when people think of confession, you listen to our, the fathers speaking before us, right away they went to um, people's fears, people's anxieties. When you think about confession, what do you think of? Well, I, I try to center on the uh, thought of the sins of thought, word, and deed. So I sort of try to look at deed first, and I try in my life not to do things that I might need to confess, but I might still. And, and then, you know, that sort of the deeds are sort of the biggest thing. And then the words are s sort of the next thing, things that I might say to my family or to my loved ones. And then thoughts. And that's, that's the area that for me is, I think, the biggest challenge. But what I do is I sort of just try to, and I, I noticed when, my husband and Father John were talking. They were talking about some people bringing a list. I mean, I never make a list, but I do try to take inventory of where I am and what's kind of eating at me, causing me to do things that, or say things, or think things that I might want to confess. But when we started and you talked about deeds, one of the first places you went was that I reflect and, and hope that it keeps me from doing things. So in that sense, confession already plays a, 
a key role in your development as an Orthodox Christian. Yeah, it's almost like you're always thinking. <laughs> I'm gonna have to I go did to confession I would for have that. To confess that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Heaven Absolutely. forbid, I would want to say that. <laughs> right. So, so it does. It causes one to reflect. What about preparation for confession? Off camera, you and I were talking a little bit about confession, and for some people, it's kind of a rote exercise. But what about for you? Well, it's that it's that same thought process, thought, word, or deed. What sorts of things and in, 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 my, I, in my prayer preparation, I think through what sorts of things have been going on in my life that I should confess. So you're not preparing, if you will, for confession the 15 minutes before you go in to spend time with the priest? Not at all, no. Okay, no. it's actually, it's, as I listen to you, it's more of a process. It's kind of an evolving thinking about... Um, reflecting on, and I think that's probably what it was intended to be. It causes you to kind of reflect and say, what kind of changes do I need to make? Uh, when you're in confession with a priest, you know, there are people who say, I don't need confession because I don't need to tell another human being my sins. God can hear my sins. What's, as a practicing Orthodox Christian, how do you respond to that when people say, why do you go? Because I can tell them to my pillow. Well, it, it just... It becomes more real. It becomes more, you are acknowledging, I think more so, to another person that is really in the representation of Christ. You know, you are really confessing to God, but that other person makes you acknowledge, I think to a greater extent. And then when you receive absolution, you just feel better. I mean, you feel like, I have confessed my sins. I feel so much better, much better than saying it to my pillow. And that's how you know it's a sacrament or a holy mystery, because you can already feel that cleansing process. Right. Yeah. But you said something really, I think, key, and that's this issue that confessing them to another person, you're not confessing, you're confessing to God. But by saying them out loud to someone, it's forcing you to acknowledge that this was the error of your ways, that you had committed this sin, that you're owning up to it. Yes. Right. Nancy, as always, thanks for being with us. Hope we'll have you back again some Thank other you time. Again. Thank right. you. Let's go back to Father John and Father Gregory to explore a little deeper the holy mystery of penance, or as we call it, confession. Do the Orthodox believe in purgatory? No, but the Orthodox pray for the departed that they may rest in the place of light and peace appointed for them until the final judgment at the end of time. The best image is of Lazarus in Abraham's bosom in Luke 16, verse 22. Welcome back, Father Gregory. It's, it's good to have you. Before the, the break, we were talking a little bit about the community. Yes. And the bishop or the presbyter uh, representing the whole community because the uh, hearing each other's sins would sometimes tempt people who are who are in the in the in the pews. Yes. Saint Paul talks about our relationship to each other as members of the same body. Yes. You know how much more intimate is that even than the image of being in the same in the same family. That's right. You know, and if you have a, a pebble mm -hmm. in your shoe. It's not just going to affect your foot, it's going to uh, uh, cause you to limp, which is going to uh, curve your spine, which is going to give you a headache. That's right. You know, your whole body, your whole body will suffer. Yes. So when we sin, uh, one of the fathers, or several of the fathers talk about uh, even a sin of the thought polluting the universe. Mm. You know, that, that when we sin, we lose opportunities to bear witness to Christ. We... Um, uh, we don't do our, our, our job as Christians and we affect each other. So we need to co confess to each other, to the community, and get forgiveness from the community. Yes. What do you think? Do you think the community is ready to forgive? Well, that's a tough one, Father. I would like to think that that would be the case. Um, I think that when they have an understanding of the nature of God's grace in their own lives and the way that it becomes real within the community, that they would understand that ultimately 
forgiveness is an integral part of that whole body, that, that forgiving one another, the, the offenses that have been caused, forgiving the priest, forgiving anyone that has caused offense, is really key to maintaining the health of the entire body. So if we're members of the body, mm -hmm. and the body is not our body, but the body of Christ yes. that we're members of, mm -hmm. then we need to follow the head. We need to be forgiving as God is forgiving. Absolutely. Yes. And one of the things that I encourage my parishioners is to remember that their role is to forgive. That in, in the midst... It's their job. It, it is their job. And that a lot of times they'll be so mad at somebody. They'll be... And, and for good reason. I mean, maybe somebody did something really bad to them. Sure. And, but, the, but the key is, I say, never let someone else get between you and God's love or, or your own salvation. That a lot of times the important thing is to let go of that offense you know, to learn to forgive, to learn to realize that God has forgiven everything and that in comparison, I mean, there's really nothing to compare, you know. Yeah. And so the offense oftentimes, I mean, it, again, I mean, there are varying degrees, but most of the time people take offense at the smallest things. And so getting them to let go of those things, getting them to realize that God's love is so much more encompassing than that. And wrong. if they don't let go, what do they do? They, let it, they internalize it. Okay. And then they become grumpy and, um, and miserable in certain circumstances. And a lot of times they'll let things build up and build up. And then we have explosions. And um, that manifests itself any number of different ways. And so getting really to get them to let go, to let go of, of, the, of the things that have been hurt, because ultimately they're the ones that are going to be able to determine you know, how open they are to receiving the mercy of God. All of the times that I'm angry with my neighbor, mm -hmm. my ability to pray is compromised. Yes. My ability to love is compromised. My ability to share and to witness is compromised. I can't do my job because I'm, true. I'm angry with somebody else. That's right. One of, one of our, our brothers talks about uh, being angry with someone is, is like giving them a free room in your house. Yes. And you get no rent, you know? Uh, you get no benefit. They steal all the time. They yes. steal all your water. They That's steal right. all your energy, you know, yes. and, um, and you have nothing to, to show for it. So That's anger right. is something we should throw out. You Absolutely. Know? Get, get that guy out, out in the street. Where he, Absolutely. But for myself, not even, not even for the other. It's true. We only have a couple of minutes left. Uh, in, those, in those minutes, mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about the mystery. What, why is... Why is confession a mystery in the church? Well, confession is a mystery. Um, and I, I was joking about this earlier because it's a mystery that even in spite of ourselves, God still loves us. But, you know, there's a lot of truth to that. Mm -hmm. a, a mystery of the church is where God breaks through and, and comes in contact with us. We, we see God's presence or we feel God's presence in a way that's very real and very profound. And in confession, we return ourselves to that wonderful state that we had really emerging from our baptism. We return to that pristine state where our soul is refreshed and, and in tune with God. Born anew. As Born we again. Wish. Born anew, that's right. And so we, we, we bring that, that presence of God back. Well, God brings it back, but we, we are open again to that possibility of being reunited with God in a way that is very pure, very wonderful, and, and very mystical. And so that's why we consider it a mystery of the church. It's really reestablishing, getting ourselves back on that right track, if you will, towards God's heavenly kingdom. Okay, so it's a gift. It's something Absolutely. God does. It's yes. God's ag action in our life. Yes. And the church reveals that. Yes. The church in the person of the bishop, mm -hmm. the church in the person of the presbyters, and the church in the presence of all of the people who right. encourage and, and, uh, and support each, each, each other. That's right. Any, any other words uh, kind of in summation? Um, that confession is a wonderful gift that we have been given, an, a wonderful opportunity for us to 
really take stock of who we are and where we're going. And there are wonderful apparatus, if you will, um, the presbyters, the bishop, that, that can help people restore their walk, that they can, they can really be free of the things that bear them down and can really embrace the love of God and, and God will embrace them. And what if you find out that the priest is a worse sinner than you? Welcome to the real world. <laughs> and so what? Because the real priest is Christ. Absolutely. And if he can, if God can, can talk through a donkey, <laughs> That's right. he can reveal his will and his love through other people. Yes. And, and uh, hopefully people of, of dignity, we're all striving for that dignity uh, and to recognize that God is present with us that, uh, that he loves us and, and that he wants us yes. to be one. Thank you so much for coming. And, Thank you, um, it's a pleasure. And sharing something really important, I think, for, for the life of, of the church. Thank you. Confession. So if you've been concerned or had some reticence about this holy mystery in the orthodoxy called confession or penance, it really isn't and never was intended to be horrible or punitive as some people may make it out to be, but instead truly a gift from God, a gift for us to help understand ourselves, to reflect on ourselves as human beings, and to set ourselves aright with our Creator. And in that sense, truly a wonderful, beautiful gift. We hope you learned something this evening on Orthodoxy Now and hope you'll continue to be with us. If you'd like to know more, you can listen to Orthodoxy Now on the radio at WEDO 810 AM, 930 on Wednesday mornings, or watch this show at Christian Associates Channel 95 in the city of Pittsburgh or on Comcast On Demand. Or if you'd like to watch some other clips, know more about Orthodoxy, or send us an idea for a show, you can contact us through our website at orthodoxynowtv.com. Thanks for being with us. I'm John Rigetti. See you next time.